Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in today. We pray this message inspires you, builds your faith, and shows you how much God truly loves you. If you're ever in the Bartlesville area, we would love to meet you. For more information, visit our website at citychurchok.com. Let's jump into the message. We hope you enjoy. Hey, good morning, everybody. We are in a series called Uncensored, so I want to kind of give the PG-13 warning. If there are little ones in here, maybe of fifth grade and lower, we have a great program in City Kids waiting for them, age-appropriate content. Uh, so today it's going to continue to be a little bit spicy, and uh, that's on purpose, but uh, I'm glad that we're a church that can talk about this kind of stuff. Thank you for your enthusiasm. I'm glad that we're a church that can, uh, isn't afraid to tackle some of the hard things. Where else are you going to get it in this culture today? You're not going to get it anywhere else. So we preach the word of God. Again, we have a culture of grace. There is a culture of joy. And so we're going to get through this together. Come on, nudge your neighbor say, let's get through it. Awesome. Grab your city notes. And uh, as you turn there today, we're going to talk uh, about uh, a passion for purity, living with a pure heart, with a pure life. Um, we're going to talk about living clean in a very dirty world. And uh, that's not easy to do these days. You have to be uh, very proactive. And so I want to give you some thoughts from God's word, some great scriptures today. But most importantly, uh, you know, I just want you to take a look within. Take a look at your own heart. See where you're at. And uh, we've always here at City Church kind of been based on being honest with ourselves, honest with God, and being humble enough uh, to admit that we need help. I'd like to say this. Tonight, it's going to be different. We're going to have a worship night uh, with Andy and our team. And, man, they did just such a phenomenal job. It's a joy to be able to come up and preach after that's kind of been set up. But tonight, we're going to have a, a time of worship. We're also going to have a time of prayer. So I believe it's going to be incredibly encouraging. But I also think it can be incredibly liberating. And for whatever you're dealing with, whether it's something we're talking about today or something in your, in your life, something in a relationship, uh, something you need physically, physical healing, uh, whatever that may be, we're going to have just a special time of prayer, and we're just believing that God's going to move in a fresh and a powerful way. So we want to invite you back uh, tonight uh, for that at 5 o'clock. Um, when I was 8 years old, I had a best friend. His name was also Scott. That was weird. We were on the same hockey team, so uh, we both went by our last names. But his mom and dad were um, friends, from, uh, friends of my mom and dad, but they really weren't following God. They were kind of Christians in name, but they really weren't living that life. In fact, they owned a bar uh, right across the street from their house. And I remember I, I, when I was eight years old, I went over uh, to the Stevens house for a sleepover, and they had all kinds of fun stuff, and we played street hockey. We'd actually go to the bar and play video games, um, but uh, didn't do any drinking at eight. But the sad truth was one day uh, when I was sleeping over, Scott uh, Stevens took me down into the basement, and his dad had every copy of Playboy magazine on the planet, had every copy since it had gone out, and we sat there as eight-year-olds and looked at that content, and I don't even really fully understand and didn't understand what I was looking at, but I'm telling you, that had a lasting impact on my life, and even though I can honestly say with the hand on God's word that I've never been addicted to pornography, that moment infected my life all through my teen years, and there was occasional going back to that until the age of 20. So from 8 until 20, 12 years of, of just some weirdness, 12 years of confusion, 12 years of, of, of seeing things that I had no business seeing. Uh, at, age, at the age of 20, I got liberated and set free radically by the grace and the power of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen? And so we're dealing with a society now that it's no longer just a magazine down in a basement. It's that every kid has all the content in the world on their smartphone. And 80% of all pornography is viewed on a phone now. And... I don't know where you're at today, and, and this message is way beyond just talking about the perils of pornography. This message is a message of purity, that if we're going to be believers, if we're going to follow Christ, Jesus said to his original disciples, follow me, and I will make you. Well, guess what? As we follow him, he makes us everything that he wants us to be, and a big part of that is living pure, living clean, in a very dirty, in a very filthy, in a very infected world. Not only is 
uh, pornography, a massive issue in America, an epidemic, but it's a pandemic throughout the world. And it, it is, it's, getting, it, it's getting worse by, literally by the minute, and I'll show you that in just a second. But as we jump into this today, I want you to approach this with humility, approach this with honesty, and, and I don't know where you're at. I don't know what's going on, but st- statistics say that there's not much difference in the church than there is in the world with dealing with sexual sins and all that stuff. There's not much difference. Mary talked about it the first week. There's not much difference in the world and in the church than the divorce rate. It's, single di- it's a single-digit difference. These things shouldn't be. And I'm not here to Bible thump you. I'm not here to get on your case. I'm here to say, listen, there is freedom in Christ. There is liberty. He paid for it in full so that we could enjoy it. He came to give us abundant life in this life and eternal life in the next life. And so we have freedom. He paid for it. And we should pursue it and we should enjoy it. Look at Proverbs 3 with me. It's not in your notes, but it will come up on the screen. And then also a scripture in Proverbs 13. Don't resent it when God chastens and corrects you, for it is proof of his love. Just as a father disciplines a son he delights in to make him better, so the Lord corrects you. And I love this from the message paraphrase. A refusal to correct is a refusal to love. The reason we're talking about this today is because, literally, it's because we love you. I love you. And, and I don't want to see anyone in this church bound by anything that the enemy has to offer. And I'm telling you right now, that if you want to be free, you'll be free. At 20, it was not easy to break that cycle of sin. At 20, it was not easy as a young man, unmarried. And by the way, if you think all this ends when you get married, think again. It doesn't. It's the same battle. But at 20, being single, I pursued Christ wholeheartedly, and he showed up. If we draw near to God, he draws near to us. I'm I'm even here to tell you, if you take a a baby step towards him, he'll he'll come a million miles to meet you. That's the Father's love. But whom the Lord loves, guess what? He brings correction to. And this word brings correction into our hearts. And we should welcome it. And I hope you welcome it and receive the word today in your heart. Why? Because it's able to save our souls. In the Bible, there's a story about a man who was filled with literally thousands of demons a demoniac, and they used to t- uh, chain him up, and he would break the chains with this supernatural dark power. He would cut himself. So he, was living in the, he was living in the graveyard, and, and he'd run around naked and crazed. You know, when Jesus showed up, that man came and knelt at Jesus' feet, and Jesus cast those spirits out of him, and he got gloriously liberated. So no one here today is in that state. No one ran around naked in Bartlesville and cut themselves today and showed up all crazy. But even if you were in that condition and you wanted to be free, when Jesus shows up, guess what? Freedom shows up. And so that takes away every excuse that we have for not living in the freedom that Christ has made us free. And no matter how dark or deep your secret, you can bring it to the feet of Jesus. And you won't find him judging you, you will find him saving you, delivering you, freeing you. And so I pray that this is a church, that city is a place where we live clean. It may be polluted, it may be dirty all around us, but we're going to live clean for his glory. And again, I don't know what this means for you, but I pray Hearts are open. Lamentations 3.40 says, let us test and examine our ways and return to the Lord. What do we need to do in our lives to return to that making Jesus, making the Lord our number one focus, our number one passion? In Psalms 51, we pick this up. This is right after David uh, committed adultery, he committed murder. Look what he writes here, generous in love, God give grace. Somebody say grace. Grace. Huge in mercy. Somebody say mercy. Mercy. Wipe out my bad record. Scrub away my guilt. Soak out my sins in your laundry. 
David says, I know how, how bad I've been. My sins are staring me down. If we'd be honest with ourselves, we know what's going on in our own life. If anybody should know what's going on in our life, it's, 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 it's us. And we can fool other people and we can keep secrets, but there's no secrets from God. But I want to tell you, at 20, I had to realize something. I had to realize the difference between guilt and shame. Guilt means, like David, I made a mistake. Now, he made a big mistake, and I made, I've made big mistakes in my life. But guilt says I've made a mistake, but shame says you are a mistake. Are you with me? Guilt pushes us when we embrace what we've done and own up to it. It, it allows us to reconnect with God. It pushes us towards that grace and that, that mercy that David is talking about. But shame always keeps us disconnected from God. Guilt, when God asks Adam, where are you? Guilt shows up and answers, but, but shame keeps hiding in the shadows. And with guilt, God beckons us to come back to him. But with shame, the enemy says, you've gone too far. You're never going to reconnect with God. So I'm here to tell you today, some of you have been trapped like I was at 20 in a cycle of shame, a never-ending, unbroken cycle of shame. And oh yeah, there was repentance a thousand times over, but it continued to cycle back because the enemy had lied to me and he just said, you're not good enough. You're never going to reconnect with God. And I was caught in this downward spiral of shame. And I really believe today that that can be broken over every single one of our lives. But a big part of that is that we've got to accept responsibility. And, and we've got to, you know, we, we can't be like Adam and Eve. God comes to them and they've sinned and, 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 and Eve says it was the devil made me do it. And Adam says it was the woman. And, and they're blaming they're blaming other people. At some point, we've got to be like David, and we've got to say, my sin is staring me down. I did this, God. I sinned against you. It's my sin. But we can't allow that to turn into a cycle of shame. In 1 John chapter 2, really, I would say this is our key verse today. It says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If anyone loves the world, love for the Father is not in them. For everything that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. I'm going to say that one more time. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life comes not from the Father, but is from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but whoever does the will of God lives forever. Those three things... The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Every single stronghold, every single sin can be found in one of those three categories. Everything that we can do to rebel against God, everything in our fleshly nature comes down to those three things. I want to share some sobering stats with you. This is straight off of Pornhub's website. And I want to take a minute for us to look at this together. They're boasting how 2019 was their greatest year ever. And it is sickening. And, and Pornhub, it says Pornhub keeps on growing and it doesn't show signs of letting up. This is copied and pasted with no edits from their website. Now there's a lot of content in their year review. We can't even put up here today, of course. But I wanted you to see that in 2019 there were over 42 billion visits to Pornhub which means there was an average of 115 million visits per day. America is the leading nation by far. If you can see the United States there, look how far that bar goes out. We're the top country for porn. I hope this is sinking in. There were 8.7 billion more searches in 2019 than there were in 2018. What does that tell you? This thing is growing massively. 8.7 billion. More searches than there are people on the planet with this. And this is the number one 
porn site in the world. Look at this at the very bottom. You might not be able to see, but if you strung all of 2019's new video content together and started watching them way back, and this is in the year 1850, you'd still be watching them today. That's their language that they're boasting. This industry makes more than the NFL, MLB, more than the NBA, all combined. The porn industry is bigger than the sports industry. And if you know anything about the sports industry, it's massive. The porn industry is bigger than NBC, ABC, you name all of the entertainment capitals, and porn is massively bigger than all of the entertainment industry, which you also know is already massive. Friends, I'm telling you, this is a pandemic. And, and I would encourage you at some point, if, 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 if we're under the deception that we can live as believ- believers and we can have a porn addiction and that God just kind of is okay with that because grace is there, I'm here to tell you to read your Bible and, and maybe you want to rethink that. Because that's not what the Bible says. In fact, there are hard, hard scriptures in this. The way to eternity is straight and narrow. This is a wide path to destruction. Look at the next slide. Every minute on Pornhub, every minute, every 60 seconds, there are over 80,000 visits. Almost the same amount of searches. One of the things that's happening with porn is that it's become a social network, a social network of people messaging back and forth, trading videos back and forth. Relationships are being, think about this, formed around porn. It's growing exponentially. And I'm here to tell you, we're just putting our foot down here at City Church. And, and I'm not saying you're not welcome here if you've got a porn addiction. You are welcome here. We're glad you're here. But if you're here, then in Jesus' name, let's get free. It's not by chance that tomorrow night we have a class that starts. And if you're dealing with this, this is a great action step for you. Our conquer class. It normally doesn't run right now. Jeff and Kelly Cummings, they're wonderful believers. I mean, they love people. They've given sacrificially. We can't even count how many hours they've spent volunteering, loving, serving people, crying with people, praying with people. But this series is, is awesome. And it's for men and it's for women because porn is not just a man thing. In fact, female porn is growing at an alarming rate. Yeah, porn still is between 18 and 34 male, it's the biggest audience there, but all the other age groups are growing. Even the over 65-year-old age group is growing. And so this is how we're going to combat this. So if you want to be part of this class, I'm, I'm telling you, put your pride aside. Put your ego, check your ego at the door, and come and get supported and go through a systematic process, all based on the word of God that will bring freedom to your life. I'm here to tell you, if not, you're going to stay in the cycle of shame. You're going to do what I did for 12 years. And there's not going to be freedom until you take some steps of freedom. That man that had all those demons, he ran to the feet of Jesus. We should be running at opportunities for freedom. And I want to encourage you as your pastor to do that. And then I also want to encourage you to come back tonight and let's just worship God. Because you know what? One second in God's presence can liberate you. Come on. God can breathe on your soul tonight during worship and, and you can be liberated. doesn't mean that we don't need to take the practical steps. But man, what a, what a jump start that would be. In Judges chapter 13 through 16, there's a man named Samson. He was called to be a deliverer. We have a calling very similar to him. And Samson was anointed by God to liberate Israel. This is before there were 
kings, they had these judges, and he was a judge. But early on, in fact, the whole book of Judges, the first verse says everyone did what was right in their own eyes. So no one was living for God. Everyone was doing what was right in their own eyes. The last verse of that same book, the bookends of the, of that, of, of the, the book of Judges is everyone continued to do what was right in their own eyes. So they, the, God rose up these men and women during this time of rebellion and during kind of this sinful season in Israel where Israel's enemies dominated them and they were in bondage. And Samson was called to be deliverer and he was anointed by God. But he started to use the anointing kind of for his own games. The Bible says in Judges 14, he saw a woman, and it was a Philistine woman, and they weren't supposed to uh, intermarry. And, but he, he rebelled against God and rebelled against God's word, and, 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 and he was a miracle baby. His mom wasn't able to have kids, but God gave her the ability to have Samson, and he was set apart from birth to be this deliverer. But he, he, he started to get into sexual sin. And, and that's the lust of the flesh, and then the lust of the eyes, and then really the pride of life. Because he found himself in the lap of Delilah, if you know the story at all. And God used him to do some, some great things, but it was, it was almost as if there was a governor put on him. That he'd do a few good things, but he was never really able to fully liberate the nation because of his own issues. And because of his own sinfulness. But he found himself in the lap of Delilah, and... and he, which really is kind of in the lap of the enemy, and he's playing games. And finally, he kind of tells his whole heart, and, and then they take him. And, and they, the Bible says that they bind him, that they grabbed him, and his strength had left him. The Spirit of God had left him because of his sinfulness and because of these games that he was playing. And remember, it's the lust of the flesh, and what did they do? They bound his flesh, then it's the lust of the eyes. The next thing that they did is they bored out his eyes. You can read it for yourself in the book of Judges. It's, it, it's a horrifying story. And they took his eyes from him, and then they made him to be a grinder. And they put him in front of everybody, and they made him grind and walk around this big thing. And, and that's the pride of life, that they broke the pride of life. See, what, whatever the enemy has on us, ultimately he will take from us. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. And now in God's mercy... Samson had a moment with God at the very end of his life, and God used him in a powerful way, but he died with about 3,000 other Philistines. And God gave him a great victory. But I'm here to tell you today, don't wait just to the end of your life to see God move in a great way. Let's get free today because as Samson was called to be a deliverer, you and I are called to be deliverers. And we, we've got to use the power and the anointing that God has given us to live clean in a very dirty world. T.D. Jake says you must understand your enemy. We've got to understand the enemy, his tactics, his strategies. Why? Because you can't defeat what you don't understand. Would you write these five things down real quickly? The enemy wants to corrupt you, just like Samson. The enemy ultimately wants to capture you. Again, like Samson. Why? So that he can control you and me. So that he can keep us in that cycle of shame, condemnation. And ultimately, he wants to crush us. Corrupt, capture, control, condemn, and crush. This is what Satan wants to do with us. Thank God for Jesus. 1 John 3, 8. Anyone who continues to sin belongs to the devil, but the devil has been sinning since the beginning. Listen closely to this. The Son of God came. He was revealed for this purpose, to destroy the devil's work. So the enemy is trying to steal, kill, destroy, but Jesus has come to give us life. Jesus has come to destroy what the enemy is trying to do in our life. So write these four things down. Because of the cross, we have freedom. Come on, that's some good news. Because of the blood, the sacrifice that Jesus paid on that cross, we have forgiveness. Because of the resurrection, the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in us. Guess what? We've got some firepower. Are you alive today? Anybody out there? I know you're writing. I'll let you write. And the final thought is that because of the Son, 
We have everything we need. We have a life of fulfillment. We don't have to look for other stuff. We don't have to chase after other things. We have the Son. We have everything that we need. We have freedom, forgiveness, firepower. We have fulfillment. As we wrap this up in 2 Chronicles chapter 29, there was a king named Hezekiah. This is, by the way, this is like a a three-part seminar packed into like 20 minutes. So just roll with it. And, And I'm just trying to give you everything that is in my heart to give you today. But in 2 Chronicles 29, this young king, 25 years old, God raises up into power. The Bible actually says about him that before him there wasn't a king like him and after him there wasn't a king like him. That's a pretty amazing statement. When you think about King David was before him. That's crazy to think about. This guy loved the Lord. But what had happened is his ancestors had let the temple of God go into disrepair. And, and nothing was happening. No worship was happening. No sacrifices were happening. And so in Hezekiah's first moment of ruling, you know what he does? He throws open the doors to the temple. And he basically says, we are going to clean God's house out. And it took him weeks to do this. And the priest went in and there was a whole process. And I'm not going to bore you with all the details. But Hezekiah had a heart to clean out the temple. Look with me at, where is it at? 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Don't you realize that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? who lives in you and was given to you by God. You do not belong to yourself, for God bought you with a high price, so you must honor God with your body. So when the Old Testament, when we're talking about the temple, it was a physical place where priests went in and there was the Holy of Holies and all that. Again, it's in the Bible, read it. It's a good book. It's there, trust me. But now, we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We carry the presence of God in us. It's not just limited to this one place. We all are carriers. And so like Hezekiah, we need to have a heart and the insight and the wisdom to clean out the temple. What's in here that shouldn't be in here? And let me tell you what happened, man. They cleaned that that thing out and God showed up. I mean, revival, straight up revival hit the nation. A spirit of generosity, a spirit of unity, a spirit of joy, a spirit of favor. All of a sudden, God unleashed, it's what Andy's saying about the goodness of God. God's goodness just overcame that nation. And it was a whole new day. But it all started with, we're going to throw open the doors and we're going to let the light of God's presence into our lives. And that light exposes those dark places, those secret places. But it's a good thing. Because God's glory will be restored. And revival comes to our hearts. Proverbs 20, 27, the Lord gave us a mind and a conscience. We cannot hide from ourselves. Proverbs 28, 13, people who conceal their sins will not prosper, but if they confess and turn from them, they will receive mercy. Those are our two options, to conceal or to confess. And if we conceal, we keep all the debris in the temple and life goes on like it did for me for 12 years. But if we confess, we open up the doors, we get honest and we get humble, everything changes. God revives us. And I'm telling you, it's a whole new day. Write these few things down. At City Church, purity, purity is our choice. We make a choice to live clean in a dirty world. Please don't miss that. It is a choice that we make. It's also a choice that we make to live dirty (laughs) and not to live clean. It's a choice we make, but freedom, because of Jesus, it's our legacy. We need to live it out. Grace at this church, at City, it's our culture. Man, I sure hope 
I, I do hope there's conviction happening in hearts today. I really do, because anytime we open the word of God, I, I believe he can come in and make corrections and challenge things in our life. But I also, I also hope today that you're encouraged that there is a path to freedom. There is a better way for you. Come on, somebody. There is more freedom for you available in Christ. That the Spirit of God, you know, maybe you feel distance from Him, but you take one step towards Him and He'll move a, a million miles towards you. Grace is our culture here. And forward is our focus. Mary said it in week one. This is a place of grace, and we're not interested in your past. We're interested in your future. Like Paul said, this one thing I do, I forget what is behind, and what do I do? I press forward. I move forward into God's best for my life. Friend, come on, get this today in your heart. Get this into your heart today. That we don't have to live in the shadows. Jesus paid for our freedom in full, and it cost him everything and then heaven is our home. As we close today, I want you to see something. Please pretend with me that this rope, it's only about 100 feet, but please pretend that it doesn't just stop there, okay? That it just goes on forever. Can you pretend with me? Okay. And this represents eternity. That our lives are going to go on forever. But this little foot or so is our life here on earth. And this is where everything else from that point on is determined. All throughout eternity. It all comes back to what, where we are right here, right now. That's like, you need to listen to the street prophet, Eminem. You got you to take, you got one shot. Come on, somebody. That's pretty good. <laughs> listen to the clean version of the song, please. <laughs> Lose yourself. But, but right here, this is, can you see it? This is our life right now. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100 years, right here. And it determines everything else. So why not live free, live pure, live clean? Come on. So that it sets us up for an amazing eternity. The psalmist said, remind me how fleeting my life is. Remind me, Lord, remind me how brief my time on earth will be. Remind me that my days are numbered, how fleeting my life is. And in closing, 1 Timothy 2.4, he gave his life, Jesus gave his life to purchase freedom for everyone. Would you bow as we close in prayer? There's not going to be a call right now for a call to purity. I really believe I've done my job. The message has been delivered. Hopefully, it's been received. So you need to take that with you today, and you need to get with God. Again, I'm going to remind you, I'd really love to see you back here tonight. I would love to see this place standing room only. It should be as we worship God tonight. And I want to encourage you, why don't you come and just get free in God's presence. And there's going to be some awesome people available for prayer, but don't, don't even wait for tonight. Get along with God today. Maybe turn to Psalms 51. Maybe turn to some of the scriptures that are, we didn't even get to on the city notes and, and look at those. And, and just get with God and get real. And let him, let him do what only he can do. And he'll bring freedom. But as we close today, friend, if you're here and you've never given your life to Christ, trust me, your life's going to go on and on and on. You were created for eternity. But I'm telling you, you're not really alive 
unless you've given your heart to Christ. He came, he died. Nobody took his life, he gave his life, and he gave it all, and he paid a high price. And it was out of love so that the grace of God, the mercy of God, the freedom of God could flood our hearts and our lives. And when Jesus sets you free, friend, trust me, you are completely and radically free. And there's no way to get to God except to go through Jesus. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. Or maybe you've been running from God, but he's not mad at you. He misses you. And with open arms, he takes you back. With deep love, he receives you back. So if you need to give your life to Christ for the very first time, or if you need to come back to Christ, please, with no one looking around, if that's you here today, would you just slip up your hand? Say, Scott, would you pray for me? Thank you. Thanks. Thanks. God bless you. Thank you. That's awesome. Let's pray this prayer together. All believers, with full hearts, Let's say this. Say this after me. Say, God, I need you to save me. I believe Jesus is your son. You sent him to die for me. So right now, I receive him. Forgive me for all my sins. Free me from all guilt. Deliver me from shame. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. I'm now forgiven and free. And I'm going to live for your glory. In Jesus' name, everybody said, amen. Come on, put your hands together. That's awesome. Thanks again for joining us. We love the small part we get to play in helping you on your journey with God. Email us at info at citychurchok.com if there's anything that we can do to help you with the next step. Also, if you've enjoyed the message, be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Have a great day. Join us again next week.